Why hello there everyone, today I am going to show you how to get the space jump early into getting the screw attack early into getting the gravity suit. Because once you get the gravity suit after getting the screw attack, that is where this new strategy would converge with the old route. Quotations around old route, because this game has only been out for a few days, right? Anyways... Uh, there are videos for each of these tricks on the internet already, but I have yet to see a single video showing you how to do all of these things together, specifically how to go from one of these to the next, which is what I'm showing you today. Because even if you've beaten this game already, things can get kind of confusing when you start sequence breaking things, right? You can get lost pretty easily. So that's what I'm trying to help you with. So if you find this helpful, make sure you hit the like button. And without further ado, the first trick that I'm showcasing here is a pseudo wave beam. I've already showcased this trick. I already have a video for this trick on the YouTube channel, so I'm not going to over explain it. But uh, basically, I'm trying to shoot this flamethrower enemy down there. I'm trying to make my diffusion beam go through the floor so I can hit that flamethrower enemy, which will somehow ricochet the diffusion beam into that explosive pink blob. More recently, the guy who discovered this trick has suggested that the inconsistency in this trick is due to needing to hit the flamethrower enemy at a certain frame of its animation. So if that's true, theoretically, you could start doing, you could start utilizing a visual cue in its idle animation to hit it. Uh, but the guy who discovered this has actually been using an audio cue. See the enemy in the top right? He has been using his footsteps as a metronome of sorts to time his shot. I, however, have not practiced this nearly enough to do either of those, so I'm just going to start taking pot shots here to see if I can hit it. Well, I am hitting the flamethrower guy there. But, uh, presumably, I just need to eventually hit it at the right point in its animation. There we go. So we fall down here. And you actually can do a blind grapple beam right here to get up. Uh, just for demonstration's sake, I'm going to show that you can actually hit this from the side. Like, like so. I don't claim any of this movement to be optimal. I'm more so just interested in showing you how to go uh, from one spot to the next. Basically, where you should be going after getting one of these things, right? Uh, but you can obviously clean up the movement in between yourself. So we get the space jump here. So now we go back down. Fall down here. And now with our newly acquired space jump, jump across here, and then you can do another off-screen grapple beam. That enemy right there, though, sometimes pulls me. Like so. So I think you may want to deal with him first. And there is a bomb block right there that we want to hit as we're falling like that. Then you, then you grapple back over so you can jump across in time. Whoops. Ow. So now we are entering a elevator, an elevator, to Dairon. I'll cut out the loading screens so that way it doesn't waste you guys' time. So now we are in Dairon, and we are going to be hitting up the teleporter to Artaria, because that is where the screw attack is. Store our Shine Spark here.
So now we are in Artaria. Ow. So here you can actually get a Shine Spark. Just so you can fall faster. Theoretically, you would want to aim in the middle here. Ideally. Okay, so at this point in an actual run, you might want to consider healing up here if you are low on health, because we will be having to go through a cold area without the gravity suit. So I'm going to top off here just to be safe. So this is the first cold area. I don't think you should actually grab this. I'm just, uh, being distracted. Okay, so we made it through the cold area with some HP to spare. So getting this space jump early actually entails two things. So the first of which is an underwater bomb glitch. So you know how normally if you time your bombs correctly in the air, you can essentially fly upwards indefinitely? Well, in the water, if you try doing that, if you try doing it underwater, you can see that after one bomb explosion, they do not launch you upwards nearly as high. So it seems as if by design, the game designers did not want you to float upwards indefinitely with well-timed bomb jumps under the water. However, there's a glitch you can do that entails uh, being in more fall, placing a bomb down, and then when you pop in the air, unmorph. You definitely want to be unmorphed before you touch the ground, right? Uh, you want to be unmorphed when you touch the ground, so just make sure you unmorph before you touch the ground. And then you are now in a glitched state, so what you want to do is... Uh, so now this glitched state makes it so that way a bomb, a, a, a morph fall bomb underwater actually will pop you upwards high. If you touch the ground in morph fall at all, it will get rid of this glitched state. So let's say, for example, you accidentally do this. You now have to essentially reactivate the glitched state by doing this. So we're going to be doing that to climb up this. So now that, now that the bomb jumps actually launch us significantly high underwater, we're going to do this. So that bomb jump by itself wasn't high enough to let us grab this ledge. So after it launched us, you want to unmorph so that way your uh, interactive hurt box or interactive hitbox, so to speak, is a little bit taller. So that way you can actually reach this ledge and grab onto it like so. <clears throat> It's really not that complicated, it just sounded really wordy explaining it. Okay, so now, now that we have Space Jump, uh... So normally, as you know, the game doesn't want you to gain any kind of vertical height with Space Jump underwater. By design, you can only gain horizontal coverage. And you can't really leave the water by design either. But what we're going to do here is we're actually going to leave the water. So we're going to Space Jump over here. And if you accidentally knock yourself down, you can just space jump over here so you don't have to redo that weird glitchy bomb jump again. <clears throat> but if you do fall down, you can just redo it. So, I don't really know how this is working exactly, but I've just seen people do it and I've recreated it. And how it feels is that you want to space jump into that corner. See on the right side of the screen? See that corner of rock hovering just above the surface of the water over there? How it feels is that I am space jumping to the left and I'm just barely grazing the corner of that rock. And for some reason, interacting with that kind of geometry pushes me out of the water just enough that I can actually do a space jump in the air, letting me go high enough to get on top of the rock. That was almost it.
Let's retry it. There we go. It's not very hard per se, it's just kind of jank. It's just something you have to get a feel for, I think. So uh, normally, the game doesn't want you to get this screw attack until this place is frozen. But as you can see right now, the water is still in liquid form. Uh, to climb up this, you're going to do the same kind of underwater bomb glitch. Grab screw attack. So now you have to really pay attention here because there is a potential soft lock that you can run into. I will do the soft lock just so I can demonstrate what it is, because fortunately there is a checkpoint here when you grab screw attack, so if you do find yourself soft locked here, uh, you can load the checkpoint and you won't lose that much time. So you go up here, and see this, see this uh, rotating floor here? If you step on this and fall in here, you are now soft locked, because you cannot leave this water at all with space jump. You're stuck here in this water trap, essentially. So if that happens, just load last checkpoint. I guess the time loss is pretty significant here considering the loading screen, but as you can see, you are right back here. The thing is though, in order to progress in this route, you actually do have to go down there in that water. Uh, but the way you're going to get out of that water is to shine spark out of it. <clears throat> so instead of falling straight down here, you want to actually flash shift over this. And for some reason, you can't open this door, I guess because we are breaking the game so much. Uh, it just won't let us in here. So it would be nice if we could go in there so we could have a better running start for the speed booster. Uh, but alas, we cannot. So you have to start the speed booster from here. You barely have enough distance to do this. So I'm going to do a speed booster. And then as soon as the speed booster kicks in, I want to hit down to store a shine spark. Because it's going to be like right on the spot where you will fall through this floor. So that is why there's a risk of you soft locking yourself even if you are aware of it. So let me see if I can get this on the first try. Like so. And then immediately you want to run over here and shine spark up so you can get out of that water. And then when you're back down here, you actually need to do this jank space jump trick again. Didn't take so long that time. I'm up here. Use diffusion beam to break that. That's, uh, breakable with screw attack. So now we are back in this room. If you immediately try to just start, uh, space jumping up this corridor, it's going to be kind of weird. Because as soon as you make contact with that slidey surface, you're going to start sliding. So I found it's actually best to delay your first space jump. Right here you want to fall down a fair bit before you hit space jump, just so that way your uh, jump timing synchronizes a bit better with the zigzag of this uh, of this pathway here. Like so. So now we are going into this teleporter. Because now that we have space jump and screw attack, we want to go to uh, Berenia to get gravity suit. But apparently, the fastest way to get there is to go through multiple teleporters. So we're going to Kataris here. In the game, it's actually called Kataris, but I think Kataris sounds way cooler. So now that we are in Kataris, go up here. Break this open. And up here, there's a breakable block. So this is the next teleporter you want to go into. Still not going to Burnia yet. We have to go to Gavoran first.
This room's kind of weird. Uh, what I'm doing is as soon as I spawn in here, I'm holding charge, although that won't turn into a charge attack until you move left. That way you can just release it and open that door. If you if you move to the right or if you mess that up, uh, you know, if you stand on this thing for a certain amount of time, it's going to ask you if you want to teleport, and that's a big time waste, right? So just make sure you don't stand on this uh, on this pedestal here, despite the room being so tiny. So I'm pretty sure you have to grab that missile tank. Do I... Okay, I was about to say, do I remember where the bla where the uh, breakable blocks are here? I kind of remember. There is a beam block here. Okay, so right here you want to show uh, you want to store a shine spark. Go down here. Okay, so here I'm going to zoom in here. You want to do a side jump and end up right here. The thing is you can't actually even if you have a shine spark stored, you cannot activate a shine spark if you are in the middle of a spin jump. So, even though you're doing a spin jump here, when you're at the apex of your jump, you want to cancel the spinning by pressing L, the aim button. And that will make you stand in place. And so you want to tap L and then press B for the shine spark. I actually did this earlier in that room in Artaria when I shine sparked downwards. Uh, but it's more important to bring up now since you actually have to do it to get over here. I messed it up. There we go. So you can mess that up once, apparently, if you're fast enough at getting back on there. Okay, so this is the teleporter to Berenia. So there is a bomb block right here that you can break. This is going to lead to a speed boost segment. Right here, there are speed boost blocks. You can ideally... I'll grab this just because there's only one more that I need. Even though if you want to actually optimize a run, I don't think you should be picking up energy parts. I, I was just... I've been grabbing them just to be safe because of, you know, having to run through the cold area, for example, without gravity suit. <clears throat> So, uh, let's see if I can get this in the ideal way. Okay, so what I just did there is, if you time it right, you can actually store Shine Spark on top of those breakable blocks. So you can break the blocks and store Shine Spark in the same go. Most of the time, you'll probably end up breaking those blocks without getting a Shine Spark, and then you have to run back, and then store a shine spark uh, but what I just did there is the ideal so try to go for that if you can obviously as you can see if you shine spark into those uh, slanted surfaces you resume a speed boost run so that's how you can keep it going for that long I don't know if this is optimal, grabbing uh, this missile tank here, but it's 10 and it's right here, so I just grab it just because. Break that, go through here. Ow. Diffusion beam that one. Grapple beam this. And now gravity suit is open. I think you actually fall faster in morph ball form. I haven't actually tested it yet. It just feels like you fall faster in morph ball form. I know, though, that jumping underwater without gravity suit is, in fact, faster than just walking. So before you have gravity suit, if you're having to run through the water just jumping like this is better than walking. 
So now we have Gravity Suit, and like I said at the beginning of the video, this is where this new strategy reconverges again with the old route. So, uh, like the video if you found this helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And with all that said, I will see you guys later. So, bye for now.